Julian. No, not N, because that's a woman. Julien. Julia. So the N is, it's, it's not an R, it's an E. It's just Julia. Julien. You just don't quite bring the tongue to the your mouth. Like Je you have to finish Julien. the fucking word, Julien. If you say Julien, that's yeah. a, uh, it's barely used, but it's the female version it's of Julien. It's like saying it like it's a question. <laughs> Julien. Okay. That's yeah. what I said. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's exactly. It's French. The, the problem with American words take fucking six hours to say. You guys just keep on going. The French is like done. <laughs> you haven't and seen I mean, a lot of German. There's words where I'm just like, wow. They no, forgot the, the space way you part. pronounce it just keeps on going. Yeah. Do you want to have lunch? <laughs> and you guys go in the sunset as with the world. Us is like, bling, done. Tonic accent. Finished. So she goes, uh, Julien. No, <laughs> Julien. Don't. Like I'm speaking a, well. so don't add <laughs> syllables to it. There's a musical quality to the way we speak, though. So, like, no. there's there is some that was Julian. Anyway. No, it's just Hicks. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I know that to be a fact. Um, well, we are here. We're recording. Oh, so we are we recording. Well yeah, so, our new place. Yeah. Our first home. Our first home. Yeah. yeah. That's it. We are on the fucking rooftop. Yeah. We are, I mean, we are In on the city, Utrecht. the cityscape here. It's crazy. That is pretty sweet I gotta say so we're gonna turn all this like we're not supposed to go there but of course fuck it we're gonna do it yeah so we're gonna turn all this into a rooftop deck yeah this is wild yeah and it's it's New place. just a, like it's like one story taller yeah. than all the other buildings so in the area see. all of Utrecht yeah we'll, we'll show a picture and then on, on top of it tomorrow morning I get a pool table downstairs in the living yeah. room <laughs> so yeah life is good yeah. we'll show pictures of that too yeah, this is pretty wild. And we couldn't, we have finally a good day and it's not windy. It's Yeah, for it, now. There's no wind minutes. and it's sunny. I'm like, what? what is happening? Yeah. So if you were listening last week, we're just going to continue on kind of yeah. from what we were So I went at religious week. people because I can never stop myself, but that was only a cultural side of it. There's actually a neurological Carl Friston side to all we talked about that we're going to go into today. Yeah. Where do we want to, where do we want to kick the door in here? Well, I mean... Th- I want to talk about learning because that's really what the whole process is, right? Because we st- we talked about the fact that people are so afraid of making mistakes. Yeah. And I want to explain from a, a, it's not from the strong fit side, but you know, from, I don't know, the evolutionary biology side yeah. of things, from the life side of things. Yeah. Why is it that people are so afraid of making mistakes and why that's the worst mistake you yeah. can make? And to bring people up to speed, that was the, kind of the thing we talked about the most last week was about how you know, people who want to really lean on, I want, I want to study for this. I want to, give yeah. me, give, you give me the data. It's really about almost deflecting responsibility to a higher power, either to Th- that's some what they want. scientist, like, I cannot study. trust you, a human. I need the data from a objective source of sorts or a, a higher authority, which would be aws- awesome if it existed. Yeah. The problem is it doesn't. Yeah. What they talk about empirical data, like it's that, fully objective thing is just plain not true like in the fitness industry there they are people paying for those studies and usually they're selling you something yeah and i think people forget that the value behind change at all or yeah. like investing in i'm going to excel at this is the fact that you totally accept that you're probably going to fail at it yeah. and Absolutely. yeah like hugging on to that negative experience so you can have a positive one because otherwise you're just doing something that someone else told you to. Exactly. There's no investment in it. Yeah, yeah as you said, you start hugging the good experience. I think also the problem is people want it today. Mm-hmm. Right? So th- there's a shocking of, no, I don't want the bad part of it. I just want the good part. I'm like, yeah, but th- that's today's society, by the way. I don't, th- I don't blame people in a way. Yeah. Uh, in that sense, I think we're being pushed toward that. I don't even blame the guys for the whole like give me the study and everything i know where they're coming from right i know they're coming from a good place i get pissed about it because i think they negate the human experience and therefore their own learning so what the reason i get so pissed is because i want to tell them but you know i love you i want to see you do well that mentality will hold you back your entire life until you can let go of it so it offends me as a human being to see them criticizing Carl Friston, to see them saying, well, the halo effect, like, I don't trust that guy, I only trust empirical evidence. You are further away from learning by thinking like that. You think you're a science purist, actually, you're putting yourself into a corner where you cannot learn. Plus, how much time does that keep you away from it? You know what I mean? Until, until all of, it, uh, from the time a new idea comes, comes to the front. Yeah. 
uh, to the time that there is just a pile of data involved that where it is just now it is a certainty, a scientific certainty. But it certainty. never is. That's the problem too, is it never will be. Yeah. We still, still don't know what life is. Yeah. Right. So how can you study human beings and not know what life is? Because that's what the medical world does. We still don't know why shit happens the way it happens. We still don't understand why water behaves the way it does. Like that's my, a little bit my problem is we have putting we are putting science on a pedestal, just like we used to do with religion. Except now we are assuming that science is the answer to everything. In theory, in a vacuum, yes. But us as human beings have not pushed science to that stage yet. Maybe in fifty thousand years we'll have some of the questions, but right now we don't. So you putting it into but science has answered that question that is not true that's why we said of newton laws but again like when isaac newton came up with newton laws at the time we're like okay physics is explained guess what it wasn't <laughs> then einstein came about it was like okay physics is explained guess what it wasn't now we had quantum mechanics and now we're starting to go like yeah we can use it but we have no fucking clue what it means yeah. we still don't know what life is we cannot create life in a labo laboratory, they'll say it's chemical. We can replicate all the chemical situation where life occurs, except we cannot create it. We can't even make one, a, a unicellular individual happen. That tells you we don't get it. We don't understand it. So that idea that there is certainty in science is absurd. Yeah. Welcome to we humans, right? That's not the process. The process is making mistakes, learning as you go. If you're waiting to be sure, then just you go live in be a cemetery forever. because you'll be li you'll be yeah. waiting forever. I mean, it's it's not a lot different than what when I tell anybody who wants to come in and either if you want to start training or want to take a next yes. step in your business exactly. or those types of things. It's like, well, do I need to get in shape first before I start? I'm like, no, that's how this fucking works. Exactly. You're not now. You start now, right. and mm -hmm. then you figure it out, and things will get better, and you'll get a closer sense of what things are as it goes. When it comes to learning like this, it's it's really not that different. Where it's you it's can exactly. just start absorbing this and think it through for yourself and when things exactly. start to fall around for it yourself you can choose what what works for you and what doesn't but for yourself that means you have to experiment yeah, yeah. there's no other way it's experimentation like that's what they they're killing it with saying anecdotal evidence and all that stuff like in a sense everything is anecdotal evidence if you, like the empirical evidence idea only works in a closed system where everything that, that is to be known is known mm -hmm. then you could have true empirical evidence life isn't we don't know. So a lot of it's going to be like, yeah, I kind of think, let's go experiment and see if it works. It's yeah. this real cyclical pattern of inaction, like yes. this, with, yes. with yes. research and with behavior. Like yep. if you just keep on circling the drain on this concept, how are you going to learn anything new? You Same thing will. with yep. if I'm, by the time I'm done tying my shoes to train, the self-criticism and the uncertainty that I have has to be out the door or I'm going to spend my whole time focusing on what I lack yeah. instead of doing the work to progress in the first place. If people remember the Alpha Zero uh, podcast that we did, right? Well, I guess we'll have to do another one about that one. We have to re-up like yeah. We have to re-up that. But yeah. where I talk about the, uh, the Q-learning, right? And there's an algorithm for Q-learning. A major part in it is Epsilon, which is randomness. Without randomness, that's basically without experimentation, exploration, not exploitation, but exploration where you try shit, you're not, you're not going to go anywhere. That is not the way it works. Like that idea that there is certainty in science. The only certainty you face is in uh, religious thinking. If you're sure of something, just know you're going to our religious thinking. This is what Voltaire said when he's like, look for people that seek the truth, but beware of the ones who find it. Yeah. That's what he meant by that. Now. One of the things we want to get into from this is why is this normal? Because it is normal. Yes. It's normal, yes. normal part of the process for people to approach new information like that. It's not the most efficient way. But, but what part of right. being a so, person makes you fucking just something new and you're like, nope. Yeah, yeah, okay, so <laughs> let, let's go, uh, let's back up a little bit and re, uh, explain again the freestand stuff or maybe some of you hasn't seen it or even so I can explain because some people are missing the whole prediction idea. Yeah. So, uh, it comes from, like, for example, medical science. We used to think that the brain was just something sitting there waiting for stimulus to start uh, responding to, mm -hmm. right? And it turns out that that's not the case at all. That's interoception. If you guys want to Google that with the E. Uh, it, uh, the brain actually doesn't work like that. The brain constantly tries to make a prediction of what's coming. What's coming is not 
whether the missile is going to hit you in the face when the Russians go crazy, that's not a prediction. That's something else. It's in the sense of how am I going to feel about what's coming, right? And so the brain constantly tries to make prediction between action, emotion, and prediction, right? Between those two. And that's basically what's happening is that mix of this is coming. And so the data we gather is through the nervous, certain parts of the nervous system, right? Mostly the peripheral and then the enteric, which is the gut and then the body, if you want. And then the CNS is responsible for processing and making the prediction of this is going to happen, right? Again, it's not, is it going to be cold this winter? That, that's, it's not that. It's like, how am I going to feel or what's coming there? So, and I think it's important too, because we've noticed this a lot as we've explained this topic yep. to, you know, some coaches we work with directly. It's not a prediction as in like how you think you're going to do. It's but mathematical prediction. My, yeah, yeah. My, my, and, probability. And my understanding of trying to understand it too yeah. is the first thing we go to is some sort of language that we get. And I, and I, because I, it's and mathematical we, yeah, language. And when we talk yeah. pr a prediction, I like to think, oh, I'm going to do this thing and it's going to happen this way. It's like, that's not what this is. Mm -hmm. What this is, is it is, it is your, it is you probing constantly for Constant. information. And from millions of stuff. And, and so, so we, try, we try to, and I do it all the time when I still try to analyze how this works, right? And I think it's the biggest mistake when we explain it to people in, but, in their Okay, approach. but I have to because I can go into what, a, what, what is a Bayesian blanket. Yeah, yeah. But it's not, but, it's not uh, causality, right? It's not this linear yes. A and B gets me to C. Correct. It's this no, whole pile of experience based. and this it's 30 percent here it's yeah. it's probability based this is probability mathematics uh, advanced probability mathematics i can go into it if people want but if we can go into bayesian <laughs> yeah that, that's my problem is i have to use certain terms so i can communicate the stuff out there otherwise it's going to be boring as shit. Yeah. i can go into what schrodinger meant on a quantum mechanical level because that's the same idea, just one, Schrodinger did it from the physics perspective, Fiston from the mathematical yeah. perspective. But if you don't understand probability, you'll never understand what it means. It's not probability like the 30% chance. It doesn't work like that. You would have to read Pascal and Fermat yeah. and their letters that they sent to each other to establish what probability mathematics is. We, it's just, and it's, I have to use the words that I can use, basically. Yeah. And it's important, the, though, with, with Friston's stuff, with the error correction, specifically with the prediction, is that this isn't something that you get to really be much of a conscious participant in. No, and you want to understand, by the way, you want to understand what Friston is talking yeah. about, no one does. So I'm going to try to simplify the idea so people yeah. understand, because he had a great way of explaining it. Like, imagine uh, the difference between life and non-life, right? Um, you have a bucket of water and you drop a, a, ink of, uh, a drop of ink in the bucket, right? If something is dead, so the, the drop of ink is dead, it disperses in the water until you can't see it anymore, right? That's dead. Life, are we catching on fire? No, okay. L l <laughs> no, because there's smoke coming. Oh, I was like, oh shit. Um, there's the water heater. It was, it was well, warm, I, I, yeah, I exactly. noticed it too. I, I, just, I, just, I just figured I'd, we're going to ride this yeah, all the way to the Yeah, we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> Let's oh not talk gosh. about the roof catching on fire. That's how it ends. Yeah, exactly. And life basically would be trying to bring the um, drop of ink back together. Yeah. And then causality, death, would disperse it. And then life will bring it back. So you have to see death and, and, and life as two opposite forces. One tries to bring toward the center, death tries to spread it out. It's dispersion versus contraction. So it's almost like breathing. You would disperse, contract, disperse, contract, right? And that's the difference between life and death. There's basically opposite forces. One tries to disperse, that's entropy. That's the laws of Isaac Newton, right? Entropy always increases. The second law of thermodynamics, if you guys want me to go in that. And basically, love goes the other way. How does it do the other way? We don't know. That's what Schrodinger talked about, fighting entropy, right? So he, so I, I have to go there. Uh, Schrodinger in his book talked about basically life fighting death, so the opposite of death through two means. He fights entropy, he fights death, he fights dispersion, and then he creates order, which by is bringing he, he, by bringing it together. So, so not only is it a resistive force, as in it's preventing this from getting worse, yeah. then it's about So the contraction, yeah. right, resists the dispersion. And who wins decides life or death. Right, so life contracts and we know that because it does uh, and then we know it does it in the freestone model from you have to understand mathematics is logical evidence it's a way for us to basically understand what's happening we don't understand so we use math as a leverage 
you know, like um, you can't grab the pan like this. It's mm -hmm. too hot, it's too big. But if you put a handle, then you can lift it. All right, so mathemat mathematics is the handle. It allows us to understand the pen. We can't grab the pen by itself. It's too complex for us. We're not evolved enough to understand it. So and what we do is we create mathematics to get it. Yeah, and it's so conceptual, really, that there, that is, we can't. there isn't context. Evolutionary speaking, yeah. we don't have the brain made to understand what this is because it's in a very it's concept we cannot fathom. So the only way we can go there is through mathematics. It's our handle. Yeah. It is what it is. We need a handle for most things because otherwise it's too big, right? Okay, so mathematics is that. So we explain what life does through something that is called the Bayesian model, which is probability mathematics. And it seems that for what we saw, life obeys those probability stuff where it's constantly trying to prove that it's alive. And how does it do, how does it, do it? He make constant prediction about this is going to feel like that, it's going to feel like this, it's going to feel like that, so that it can prove to itself it's alive. Therefore, being alive, because that's yeah. what alive is, is proving to yourself that you are. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Reinforcement learning. Exactly. So that's what I mean by prediction. So I know it's complex, but it's just, that's not mine, guys. Like you go, that, that's a little bit my problem with people that, that go into and start to criticize Carl Friston or the stuff based on what they understood of the world that I used. I'm like, no, you want to criticize Carl Friston? Go read Carl Friston. Go study the shit and it's going to take you the next 30 years and then we can talk about it. But don't use the, your misunderstanding of my oversimplifying words to criticize the dude who's doing the most important work I've seen since Schrodinger. Well, like Tyler said, people have a misunderstanding with most things that you actually have a say or some control in that whole process. Like, you, just because you don't want 30 yes, wall balls exactly. to hurt doesn't mean that you're gonna suffer through 30 yeah. wall balls. Like, you don't get to say, I'm, I'm gonna kill this workout today and then yeah. manipulate your fitness in the process. No, no. Now, you, so, you, you have a concept that you've kind of come up with as far as, uh, the, the what's the term the learning rate yes. right okay yeah. so now yeah. now that i explain the first and stuff we can go toward what the body does so life basically tries to make self-fulfilling prophecy so life is a learning mechanism right so we can move forward and fight death all right so that's what Carl Fischer was trying to to explain is how does life learn so the body makes a prediction uh, sorry the brain makes a prediction right so by definition some of it will be wrong that's just the way it is. All right, so what happens when you're wrong and you're always wrong at some point? So first thing is people have to understand that to learn something new, to get something new, you don't get to change the thing. You have to change yourself, right? It's like lifting. You have to become the guy who squats 500. So whenever you make a prediction, you have to understand that we are not, your body is not trying to change the thing itself. Like I need to play pool better, right? The key is not to change my stroke. The key is to change myself into a better pool player because it's way more than the stroke it's an overall you're not the intent behind the stroke is incorrect you're not going toward the shot with the right intent because maybe you don't understand the shot well enough because you don't have the knowledge to so by getting knowledge of the shot you will approach the shot the shot differently with more confidence with the correct stroke with the correct attitude with the correct aim so i'm not looking to change my stroke i'm looking to change myself so whenever you make the wrong prediction that means that you are the wrong person for that task, which is okay, but that's where self-hatred comes in because you feel like I am not capable of doing that. Yes, you're right, <laughs> but now we can do something about yeah. it. So self-hatred is just a step in the right direction. Okay. There's nothing wrong with it. There's something wrong with it if you stop there. Yeah. Right, so that's the learning mechanism. So first is I need to make a new prediction. I need to aim to be the person who can do that. Right, then from there, I need to actually put the work into action. Once I put the work into action and I become the person who can do the stuff, that's work, experimentation, and all that stuff, right? And then what we're gonna talk about, the five stages of learning. Yeah. Uh, then you get basically the, um, to feel good about it, about the person you become. Or bad if it's not enough and stuff like that. But that's the learning process is you change who you are, you change the world, you feel good about it. Right, that's basically the process. And that's we're gonna, we're what's interesting. So and now, now that does break down to exactly how you would describe the three steps or the three options for changing a prediction yes, since the beginning. Exactly. Right. And even then, in my my initial interpretation of that was that uh, you it's not that, that I didn't see it as a process, as step one, step two, step three. I looked at it as three options. Sure. But mm. now that I see 
it explained in this way, uh, it does seem to make a little that's bit the, more sense. That's the correct way to learn. It's the, the correct problem way. is you can you get to skip step if you want to. Yeah, and yeah. that's the problem. <coughs> and so, so I wh where I came up with the biggest source of confusion when I was dressing, yeah. I was like, all right, so I need to do it this way, but not this way. It's like no, no, no there is a process here, yes. and uh, because and that clears it up you, a lot. You tried to skip step one. You yeah. try to say, I need to change the world. No, you cannot change the world. You're trying to become the person that can change the world. Yeah. And you have to do that first. To do that, you have to kill who you are right now. Yeah. All of those steps are what help you to realize your prediction was wrong in the first place. Yeah. It's, it, it's what makes you go, ooh, there's so, I need to do something about this. Otherwise, you're just gonna say, you're just gonna stay in that pattern yeah, that's again. That's the thing is, I think you, if you do skip any of those steps, you end up just re right. repeating so, the same error. And let me explain why. If not so in that capacity, the, in another. There's way. a study that was done in 2012. You guys will love study. Will uh, just fucking Google it. <laughs> uh, that is called uh, emotional valence, V A L E N C, uh, C E. Sorry, and the free energy principle, where they explain where emotions fit into the Carl Friston model that was actually sent to me by my friend Eric Voltrin, which is a great paper that goes into what I've been saying about how to learn that we're going to go into. But the idea was that emotions are there to increase or decrease your learning rate. Why? Because you can't learn from everything. Otherwise, you do some really stupid shit. Yeah. Like if you learn that jumping off a roof is a good idea, then you'll push it until the moment you, you'll kill yourself. So from a survival perspective, you can't just learn everything at full rate. You don't have the energy. We're going to go into why. And on t top of it, it would be very uh, destructive at some point. So there's going to be a learning rate. So there's going to be an increase or decrease of running rate. And that is what emotions are for. Emotions are to allow you to learn faster or slower. Why? Because when things go well, you don't need to learn as fast from a survival perspective, right? If I try to build something next to the bear, I'm going to have to learn very fast not to do it. But once I've built in a nice area, the learning rate will go down because there's no need to continuously push. I think that. that's, I think that's really like the best analogy for that too, is what are the, you know, the main things that a human being needs, you know, you need shelter, you need food, food. you need human connection, yep. you know, whatever. And if you have all those bases covered, like what what is the there purpose? Is no need to, the, yeah. the, like there's much less of a pull for experimentation because your needs really are covered. Which, but that's the point. Because that is the point. Right, that is to the be point. alive. We pull towards order, and that is Ex order. Exactly. So now, we're so in now shelter, we that there's nothing dispersing you, you don't need to keep contracting. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll go into a black hole. But th that's the way we built the problem. So the problem is, ten thousand years ago, we were in an environment that constantly tried to disperse us. Death was a, con was a continuous part of life where you had to face it continuously, at least visually. The bear was coming and stuff like that. There still is, but now it's it's less visible thing. We have created a society that allow us not to freak out about death anymore. The problem by doing that is we are diminishing our learning rate close to zero. Mm -hmm. Because there, to this system, there is no need to push forward because there is no environmental uh, threat. We've shifted that the mindset of survival to freaking out about something different. Yeah. yeah. Like things it, that actually will. don't matter, right? Because exactly. the goal yeah. was to look at yourself in the mirror and go, yes, and move along. And now we've learned to be upset every time we turn on social media because they all have something that I don't have. Or because having that's to get a do. car that you don't really care to drive because that's a social status. But you need that. That's the, the thing is people have to understand is this is normal because you need that. The life is a learning mechanism. And the only way to learn, so as we were saying, is first you need to kill the old prediction. Right? So how do you kill the old prediction? How do you become something new? That means that to kill the old prediction, you're going to have to go through the harshest of emotion, right? In order to force yourself to create a new prediction. So. I mean, the learning mechanism is going to go, that's the step we talk about all the time. You're going to start with boredom, right? Then you're going to move to frustration, then to anxiety, then to anger toward others, and then anger toward yourself. Anger toward yourself is the most powerful force. And that's the one that is going to up the learning rate to the maximum and allow you to finally learn. Because you've cranked the dial of your learning curve to the max, and yeah. now finally you're capable of doing something. But that means that if you feel the need for learning, and you always do because that's what life does, you're going to get bored, you're going to get frustrated, it's going to go into anxiety, into anger, into anger at yourself to learn. So if you rec if you go at something that does not require much learning, boredom will be there. Like, oh, I'm, I, I'm not doing enough. Let me do something different. Okay. 
So now you choose an activity. Then the activity is not going as well as you would like because you don't have the skill necessary. So now you have frustration. You're cranking it, so now your learning rate goes up. So and then each time we come a little bit further up from uh, if this was just... From a need perspective. Yeah. I need uh, to learn this movement better, faster. Yeah. So you crank, and the emotion a, is going to crank. And from a cue learning perspective, then that is yeah. really more... Uh, That's your randomness. learning rate. What they call the learning rate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, You just keep cranking. Like, I need to learn. That situation requires more learning. All right, so now it's anxiety. Every time I go to it, I'm like, <gasps> why? Because now I have to make a choice whether I'm going to put the energy into it or not. I'm going to explain why that happens. Remember, don't let me get away from the diva brain. Yeah. Okay, that's after. But so you go from frustration to anxiety. It's a signal of basically the, the feeling is getting worse so that you learn faster, but also starting to question whether you should do it or not. Because you're spending so much energy into it, your system wants to know that it's worth it. Yeah, so is this worth the effort? Is this yeah. worth the effort? Normally, the world will answer you. You have anxiety about getting close to bears, no shit. But you don't have a choice, they're coming. Mm -hmm. Problem is society today has shifted from who we are, which is mostly afferent, mostly reactive to the environment, to us having to make decisions to what we need to do. We did not need to do CrossFit before. People came to beat the shit out of you. You had to fight them. So you constantly had that drive where you knew exactly where you had to go through a hard workout, otherwise you're going to die. So you understand that. Today we're in a world where everything is easy. We don't look for shelter. We don't look for hot or cold. We don't look for food. We don't look for mates. So why is it exactly you're supposed to do CrossFit? That's a hard question to answer. Yeah. Because it used to be answered for you, but it's not anymore. Especially so now it as gives you, you start anxiety. going on and it gets fucking King challenging. Hard. Yes, exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? And the, and the process becomes more difficult. And I think every step in this process you're describing you know, at the very end where your anger points from away from someone else towards yourself and then finally that forces now you, you know. to make that change. Yep. Uh, I like to think of it about immersion. It's, you know, it's like walking into the water, yep. right? And the first little bit, you're just kind of dipping your toes in, yep, right? Exactly. And until the time, then it, you get to the very end, you're like, fuck it, we're in the deep end now. Yeah. And, now you got to do this. And shit. now you got to yep. do it because yep. it is at that point, the stakes are so high. Things are cranked up. Exactly. It's sink or swim, baby. And that's yep. how you learn. And Okay, but so that means that that literally are, is the system learn. So you go from anxiety, then you go anger at others. Like, why would you be doing that? Because that anger is, again, you're learning much faster. And that anger used to be okay because the hands were at the doors, yeah. right? And so now you have to fight them. You don't care about them. Compassion's at the window. Like, I'm going to go crack some heads, which was perfectly fine. Or the bear is coming or whatever, except today that requires so much socialization. You don't know how to deal with the anger, right? So you're like, I'm a super. What, what do I do with it? Am I supposed to use it? Uh, yeah. And now, basically, so everything is pulling you back toward, oh, maybe I should back off on the energy expenditure. Where actually, to truly learn, you need to go further, which again, is used to be the world doing it to you. Now you're going to have to make that decision yourself, and it's much harder. So that's why I'm, I get where they come from with this. It's hard, because we have to make the stuff happen. So you have to face anger, then finally toward yourself. And by doing that, you're going to kill who you are now in order to build who you want to be. And now you're truly learning. That's why we say finding your hammies requires at first you're bored out of your mind, then frustrated, then anxious, then anger at me, then anger at yourself, then you find your hammies. And now you, it changes who you are. Because now that we've done through the learning process when I is max and you've learned something new, you've done the work in the world, right? So yeah. you change who you are by doing the work in the world, right? By going through the phases where you actually took real action even if it's just finding your hammies. So now you're going to start kicking in the good stuff, which is dopamine, oxytocin, that makes you feel awesome, to bound the prediction, to bound what you learned into a new person. And I think but then we have to do it again. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's where I think people get confused is going through change is really hard. Like, I think back to the last two years of my life where I was like, nope, we're not doing this anymore. You, you have to become a different person. Um, and so I was in that level of... Um, anger at myself so I did the shit because exactly. the only other option was going back to exactly where I was before and that we, that was but already you, which have you you're done before because out. you s yeah. you were in the same pattern until kind of one day nudge exactly. the door open and then and let it back. close and because then, I think in, in every situation like in people's lives where do they, they make so much progress shortly at or around the point where they'll describe you as rock bottom mm -hmm. yeah and why is yeah. that because it's at that moment, there's fucking nobody else to blame but you. Mm -hmm. And the emotions are so strong. And yeah. you're like, fuck, fuck, 
fuck, it's me. Rock bottom is when the emotions are so strong, yeah. your learning rate is at its greatest. But, but that ends up being the catalyst for usually the most change that anyone experiences in their life, from learning to habits, Near death to experience. personal change, yeah. everything. Because and you've killed who you were. Yeah. And how much investment you have made in yourself by that point. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've already put a lot of work in, and you're not turning back now. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. uh, there have been a few times in the past couple of weeks where, um, you know, I'm getting through to the point where, you know, I'm noticing things about myself or getting ready to have a big change. And every now and then I'll start to kind of press yeah. back and Julian will say, like, you remember what this looks like. You remember what happens when you shut down and you start to bottle this stuff in. Like, is that where you want to go? So putting a doorstop in between each step and making yeah. sure that you don't have to go back through step one, two, three and four yeah. so that you can make progress because addiction, lifestyle change, it's all the same. Yeah. Like the level between healthy and dysfunctional is, it's a very short yeah. gap. It's what you choose to go. By the way, I think also the problem is that uh, we judge boredom, frustration, anxiety, and anger as bad things. Always. Mm -hmm. Well, if you look at it from what I explained from the frustration and then the, the emotional violence, it's actually, the only way forward. So how can it be negative? It's a function. Mm -hmm. It's like saying peeing is bad. Yeah. No, that's a moral choice. It depends on where you do it. Because it feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that would be a moral choice, right? So yeah. that would be imposed to you by a culture or the whatever mm -hmm. you, you have around you. But those steps to go to our learning is the way the body works. It's the way we design. So you don't it's not bad it's a function and i think where we make the mistake is associating uh numbers based on how good it feels versus how bad they feel and the way we be and that fear of mistake comes in and all that stuff and so when that happens now you're in trouble because there is no other way forward so that, that vilification of anger is to me the biggest problem we face because we tell all kids not to get angry but then there is no learning so is this process, though, of, of these steps, is this something, though, that you can kind of, you should actively participate? You, you know, we talk about the prediction of here, but like, and that, how some of that is automatic, if you will, but this process, you... You should you, love every part of it. And you should be aware, all right, I am bored with this, which means I need to take it I here mean, I here. started to learn. So you have to take it as a positive side. Yeah. When you've made so much progress, about the lift that you're getting bored being at the same weight, that means your system is telling you, good, because let's I, move on to the next stage. Because I think people, get, people, and I do this all the time, if I'm working just to reduce it to something, something training-wise, right? I'm yeah. frustrated with something that I've been working on for a few months, and it just doesn't seem to be improving, right? That really, that isn't a fixed state. That's not a yes. situation that I'm just in. Like, mm -hmm. well, I just am for, like it is, a, when you understand that that's a part of a process, it's very easy then to know, okay, well, here's the deal. It's gotta get worse before it gets better. But that's what it like, means. Which, it which means, means I need to, to get invest worse. more. Exactly. Which means it needs to exactly. stress it me more. It needs to get worse. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the point where they don't get. It's like, I'm frustrated, therefore I'm doing it wrong. On the contrary, that just means you're not doing enough. Yeah. If you were to get more frustrated, you get you would to learn more. They think frustration is the wrong way in the maze. Well, actually, that's the correct way in the because maze. Because just like you know, with the the walking into the water thing, yeah, like, that's the deal. It's like look at how far. Like you got to go deeper, man. Like you got to put more of yourself. And asking in there. for a research study for validation on your not anger, putting is yourself further. In exactly, it's you yes. trying to find a way out of it's, that experience. By the way, they are those research papers again. But uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. You just you're just backing away. Yeah. Right. And so. Do you want to know if you're angry? Ask yourself. And yes. what happens after you got angry? Nothing. You got angry. And yeah. then you didn't blow, you didn't burn your house so, down. So let's talk about this before I go into the diva brain. How would you, you feel frustration, right? You're supposed to increase it, but for whatever reason, you decide to back off from it. How would you do it? So they are what I call the sympathetic fixes to do it. Let's, let's take one step at a time. You have boredom, right? How do you fix, how do you fix boredom? Like, because uh, I'm making a point about a number of stuff. How do you fix boredom? How should I or how do I? No, no, how do you? Not oh, how should you? I whip out my phone. And if I'm Change the way there. I feel yeah. by right. eating. So <laughs> you go eating, so food, yep. right? By the way, usually carbs. Why? Because it produces a sympathetic reaction. So the point I'm trying to make is those steps, um, sorry, boredom, frustration, anxiety, anger, others toward yourself, there are ways to feel them by activating the 
sympathetic nervous system. Why? Because those emotions usually provoke a sympathetic reaction, which is the learning rate. Because the sympathetic reaction detached from those emotions then is just, I almost view, view that as just stress. At that no, but point. understand you know that. I mean? that's, not, it's, that's not a part but of the process. But that's not stress, that's energy. Yeah. That's True. Yes, correct. Boredom, frustration expense. is energy. So how do you spend that energy? You can build up that energy to spend it into learning, or you get to let the air out of the tire as it builds up. Right? Imagine you have a car, you need to build the air out of the tire in order to move the car. So you start to building the air in the tire, but it does not feel the way you would like. Well, no shit, because you're not moving the car yet. But you could, so in order to go backwards, all you got to do is let the air out of the tire. That's it. That's the way backwards. Yeah. How do we go backwards? So boredom, food. So how do you go backwards? You create a sympathetic reaction. That's what I call a sympathetic fix. So for boredom, we would have cashews, chocolate, food, symp sugar-based, Sympathetic so without reaction. walking further through those steps, now you're, you're to, just yeah. giving yourself the reaction, which is essentially going to keep pulling you back. That you are going further, but you're actually not. Yeah. So you're cheating yourself into, uh, instead of taking action, you're going to cheat by doing a sympathetic fix. So which one are those? You have food. That's the one we, the podcast we talked about, behavior and food. But you could also, for example, you could use exercise. Mm -hmm. You could go to the gym and let off some steam. Yeah. Yeah, letting off some steam means you don't have to be angry at yourself. Yeah, but then you're not learning anymore. So are you training to get fit or are you training to let off some steam? Because if you tra train to let off some steam, you are using exercise not to act. Yeah. You are using exercise as an addiction, just like you're using food not to take action in your life. That would be bad. What is another way to do that? Let's say you're frustrated. You could go on social media. Social media, usually you go out of there out of frustration to get pissed at somebody. Yeah. Let's be honest. That's what. Yeah, expand the Facebook. So stuff. there was a yeah. thing I was listening to a while back, and this was a guy who had come up with, with Mark Zuckerberg as Facebook mm -hmm. started kind of turning the corner into what they are today, and they said they had a big problem early on where they, if you remember what Facebook was years and years ago, it was very small, and people would post a thing and maybe a pic, like it wasn't this consistently churning thing yeah. that uh, people are enrolled in essentially all day anymore. That wasn't what it was. So they came up with lots of options. And the first thing, if you remember five, six, seven years ago, eight years ago, was games. Yep. That's how they'd get you to pull back up and log back in. And, and, and they needed to get you not just to spend more time on Facebook in one sitting, but to continue yep. to go back. I need this. I want to keep checking. Because advertisement. And that's exactly what they did with the games. And these games are all the bright lights and all the things. Then they started changing the way they structure notifications because the game situation worked until it didn't mm -hmm. you know what i mean they kind of fell off it was not no longer no. novel became an irritant but they found out what worked much better was outrage outrage and so now the entire algorithm is shifted towards to literally manipulate you and there's a whole lot of ethical discussion behind this where people believe that actually they shouldn't be allowed to do this because yep. their goal now yep. is they don't want you if you open up facebook do you have the right to actually see if I open Facebook right now and I have six people have commented on a post, right? Do I have the right to see that six, I have six notifications at that moment if I have them all by then? Probably, but that's not what they do. Yep. Very often you will open it up and you will see you have three notifications mm -hmm. and you'll see those and you're like, huh, okay. And you'll check those and then you turn it off. Then if you open it again in 10 minutes, those other three notifications are yep. there. Well, they were fucking there before. The deal is they, yeah. they, they need to keep it so there's that red thing and that yeah. one quick quick trigger of either validation or just to pull you yeah. a little bit further. Yeah. And they want you to have that every single time you open it up. Uh, couple that with now how the algorithm works for bringing up engagement is it brings up these all the posts that get go the most viral are outrage yeah. posts, basically. How many times you got to listen to some fucking redneck ranting about some bullshit or in his Russian. car. Yeah. Because <laughs> it might so, be, yeah. as we're discovering, yeah. it work really well. And yeah. so so the whole thing's very easily to be manipulated. You just gotta tug at people's angry strings, if you will. And yeah. and it's and it and it just works. And that's, that's why how Facebook is this time suck but juggernaut that, that's at why, this point. That's why it works, is because it allows you to use the learning fuel into being pulled to make some dude money. Yeah. So that's the problem is the system we have now is designed. So in a way, the system understands how life works, how humans works, yeah. and it needs that energy to go instead to go to our learning, 
to go toward making someone's money. So we back, basically this is a offshoot of the industrial revolution where we took people away from farms where they were producing stuff to put them into machines and become uh, into factories and become robots to make some guy more money. Yeah. Right? We're doing the same thing. The energy that we have for learning, which is life energy, literally, because that's what life does, it's learning. That life energy is being pulled away from you to be pulled into a money-making machine. Yeah. And so uh, that's why outrage works, because once you start to have that learning, those learning juices coming up that leads you toward frustration, you're going to, instead of taking that and bottling it and making it harder to learn, you're going to use it and spend it on Facebook. And the other thing that's interesting is, have you ever seen anything that's covered a lot of ground on, say, social, on Instagram or Facebook that is, that you would describe as something either more on the side of soothing, parasympathetic, yeah, flow. Exactly. It doesn't fucking no. exist. It covers no. no ground. It never works. But look at what works. It doesn't work. Is it's not all negative stuff. Now outrage works and anger works. That gets the you're gonna get yeah. twenty thousand comments, piss somebody off, right? Yeah. But the other thing that works, look at what else goes wild. It's the most feel-good, sad stuff. I haven't seen my brother. He comes back from the war, and so there is all. But that is a sympathetic response. It literally, yeah. the whole that thing is, is dialed. Even that, that is problematic because if I am upset because I'm frustrated at my person, right? And I go on social media and I see all of these happy people with yeah. these beautiful right. lives, holding their kids, doing this stuff. Now I'm pissed off because I'm mad at him and they've got a great life. So yeah. I'm not having yeah. a good life. And now I'm mad at myself for being mad yeah. at myself. And here it goes again. The whole, the whole thing turns they, into this. No, like, but they, what they're doing is they're mimicking the process because you get after learning anger, angry at yourself, you learn, then you produce dopamine, which is still a sympathetic uh, response. You go produce yeah. dopamine and then oxytocin finally would take you back into the parasympathetic. So what they're doing is mimicking that. So there's hardship, the guy goes to war, then he comes back, his family is there, dopamine, oxytocin, and yeah. now you have the soothe feeling. Yeah. So they're mimicking the learning process through that stuff. The problem is it's not your mm -hmm. learning process, mm -hmm. it's somebody else's. Yeah. So all they're doing is using your energy to feed the machine. This is the matrix. Yeah. They're creating that fake life to, to basically use you as a battery to, to, um, to make their machine work. This is literally the matrix. This yeah. is why we love the movie, because that's the society we live in. They are using our what is, energy. What is funny is how much that parallels those things. It's exactly that. That movie that. came out in like, what, like 2000? Yeah. Uh, yeah, probably 10 you know years I mean? ago. Like yeah. Really? Yeah, I think it was, I think it was 2000. Really? I think I was still in high school, I'm pretty sure, when that came out. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, because I was in the US the first time. Yeah, yeah. 2000. Fuck yeah. me. But that, uh, that's the same but thing. Th but that's it, right? And, and it's, it, it is very interesting. It's, it's, and here's the thing I'm not going to be the high horse guy in this thing. I am literally the worst when it comes to those things. I don't, now, I don't do the outrage comment thing. But not anymore. But the, okay, but the but let's time talk about this. and the triggers. But Those things, okay, but I let's talk see about it, this. I feel that pull, you, you, you know? you're doing it less. Lately, yes, you've been to. trying to learn. No, yeah. you don't have to. What's happening is you want to learn now. Yeah. We're doing the podcast together. You want to get yeah. stronger again. So you have spent more of your will toward learning. Which does pull away from that other and, stuff. But it does more than that. So now you are more sensitive to sympathetic reactions. Yeah. So now, so let, first sympathetic fix, and then let's go at that. Let's do it. Sympathetic fix. You have food, right? Yeah. Carbs based. Sugar. Yes. You have coffee creates yep. parasympathetic sympathetic reaction. So you're bored, you drink coffee. You're bored, you do this. Why? Again, to let the air out of the tire. Yeah. That's, you're in the matrix being siphoned out, basically. You have social media because it creates outrage, which allows you to get that anger out instead of into the learning behavior. You could do um, think about something that piss you off. Mm -hmm which sometimes I catch myself randomly on the bicycle, suddenly going, <gasps> yeah. it's the same thing. Instead of learning, I'm cutting myself, hitting on someone. I'm like, why am I doing this? Doesn't even feel good. Yeah. That's because I'm raising the stuff, but that anger should not be at that imaginary person that I'm beating the shit off. It should be toward me because I'm tr this just means I'm trying to learn something. I'm just directing my energy, giving it to the matrix instead of keeping it for myself and actually learn, right? Yeah. So there's all those fixes that we use. You have food, exercise, behavior, so um, thought patterns, uh, social media. Oh, yeah, booze. So you, booze, know, okay, yeah, so booze, yeah. right? Booze, I'll be in food, all that stuff. So now, you, you start to intrinsically understand, even without putting words to it, that this is not good. I need to learn more, because that's where yeah. you are now. You, you're starting to read more about yeah. all the shit, freestone and everything. You want to get stronger. So suddenly, you are more sensitive to coffee. Yeah. 
like crazy sensitive to coffee. Because that used to be the way to let the tires out, and now yeah. you want the air back in the tire. So you go like, oh, I can't have too much coffee because the air is coming out. Yeah. I don't like it. Why? Because now you want to learn. Yeah, it has become between the, I think the awareness of that also comes from the nutrition stuff too. It's clearer to me. But that's what it was for. Yes. The nutrition was to give you clear signals yeah. so you understand the difference between having air in the tire and not having air in the yeah. tire. It changed your relationship from food to being one of sympathetic to yeah. one of and strictly so, fuel. So now that yeah. I know what it is and it, it does, and that's the thing, is that the, the truth, you don't, and you don't win every time once you're aware of it, but you're aware and like once you know, you can't unknow. You know what I mean? You yeah, ever have somebody that gives you like you really learn, good advice when yeah. you're a kid and you're like, fuck. What I wish. And but it hangs in your fucking head yep. and you keep fucking it up and fucking it up and then finally you're like, Oh, this motherfucker was right. Mm -hmm. yep. Like I had to get there on my own, but but, but it does once the seeds planted yeah. it starts chipping That's away. That's the thing is you never you don't earn in that sense. Yeah. So and, but coffee always... now and, and you've done the same thing now, yep. is, is, I is coffee I now it. I've like a double espresso in the morning. That's it. I'm and that's going to be it. If I have another one, it's going to be, and this is, would be first thing in the morning. It might be noon or one, depending on when my training is. I don't even do that. Otherwise, do otherwise that's, that's it. And this morning, I didn't even want it. And because it's uncom it's literally feels uncomfortable now. You know why? Because now you're starting to understand like if you raise that energy level of yours, it will take away from action. And what I found too, is it feels like I am what bothers me about it is where it runs away from you. If you ever had just the general experience yeah. of too much caffeine, yeah. this is different though because it's not too much caffeine yeah. necessarily. No, but, but what it does is it feels it still like it takes away from action. It feels like it's running away from me and it's something that's not me now. So yeah. now it's like it's pulling exactly. me. It's like, well, that's not where I need to be right because now. Because that's the matrix pulling. You understand that by doing that, you're going into the matrix. Yeah. So this is why I try to tell people about food and all that stuff is you have to understand that the more sympathetic fixes you have during the day, the less you will do because the less you will learn, the less action you will take, yeah. the less you will change the world. So be honest with yourself and see how many sympathetic fixes you have during the day and tell yourself that each of them represent an action you're not doing. Each of that represents a learning experience you're not having. The, each of those things is energy you give to the matrix. Every single sympathetic fix you have during the day is energy you give to the matrix instead of yourself. So when you exercise to, get, to let the steam out, you are giving that energy, you're literally the bunny on the wheel, giving the energy to the matrix instead of getting fitter or stronger. Yeah. And now, so let's go through, what, what are our sympathetic fixes again? It can be food, it can, can be... It can be food, um, it can be uh, stuff, ex exercise media. or behavior, it would be social media, it'd be randomly getting pissed at people, yeah. creating problems when there's none. Yeah. With your spouse, with your kids, with stuff, where suddenly you want to be, suddenly you have moments during the day where you want to be angry. Yes, because that anger normally should be directed at yourself because you, that means you're trying to learn something so about what, something. So what, what is the objective solution then? Like how can a person filter this as, as I'm going through my day and I'm just like, let's be real, it's a really nice day. I don't have anything planned except for I might train later. Uh, a, 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 a reasonable feeling would be it's beautiful, we're on the roof. Let's have seven to nine beers on the roof this exactly. afternoon, right? Right. Uh, not that there's going to be anything wrong with that as a concept. We'll plan later. But, <laughs> but, but, but when when those when that pops up, like oh, I could just do this. Well, that is really a pull could towards you, a sympathetic. Okay. So, experience. but could you socialize without the beer? Certainly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's the, that's not the point. The point is, oh, I feel awesome. Let me give more energy to the matrix. Inst Why? Because being the frustration and yeah. everything is something you think is negative. Yeah. Or if I'm feeling lazy and lethargic in the morning and I just want to have some coffee. Five of them. Yeah. 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 Because you get the sympathy. Because lethargic means you need to go, okay, what am I not learning? Right. Where yeah. am I not it in life? How do I pull myself forward? Exactly. It takes myself. Instead of pulling the state onto me. Yeah. 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 Like participation of yourself. How yes. am I doing? That. What is happening here? Yeah. Before you start doing shit. Yeah. Like, I think most of us are like, oh, I'm hungry. Going to grab the nuts. And then we're like, oh, yeah. nope. They joke, they joke around about how people get too many, kids get too many participation trophies growing up. Yeah. But the thing is, is once you become adults, very few people actively participate in anything that they do anymore. No. Yeah. You actually you know? have to show up to life and yeah. do shit. Yeah, so you have a day like this where you're going to be in the sun and do not much. Okay, so how about you learn about yourself? How about you learn to be happy for once because it's yeah. more moment to do that. How about you put that energy to work and then you'll feel a frustration like, oh, I should do this more often. Good, mm -hmm. well, then, then do it more yeah. often. Then yeah. organize your life. So because usually there's something in your back saying, dude, you don't have the life you should have because that's how what life is. It's yeah. making you move forward. So when you're here, 
basically in the sun taking eight beers. You're just using that moment to do nothing. Yeah. That's what the eight beers are for. Yeah, you're just burning so you the don't afternoon. exactly. Yeah. But that's what social media is. How busy do we feel on social media? Very busy. Very busy. Yeah. You're doing absolutely nothing. For sure. Unless you're working through social media. Yeah. Usually when you stroll on Instagram on that stuff, you're not doing shit. No. And yet you can be two hours on it feeling extremely busy. Yeah. Right? You are giving your energy to the matrix instead of using it for yourself. The problem is using it for yourself means cranking up the dial to learn. And that feels that feels less good now because the system the system has figured out we have created a matrix system and the matrix knows how to suck the energy out of us so before we move on to the diva brain stuff yep. i want to talk though so as we move from one step to another in this process from boredom to frustration anxiety yep. there isn't like is there some sort of catharsis as you transition from one to another where there's a oh sweet now i'm not bored i'm fucking frustrated oh yeah like, that's like, like, you do, trying that, to give but yourself that's the thing is, does that feel good no nope. like there's so that's the thing is this whole thing is this kind of that's Actually, that's not, of your involvement. That, that's not true. I think when you're, this is what I'm getting at, is yeah. I think when you are aware yes. of it now, yes. you start to embrace that part of the process. Yeah. Like if you know, a uh, stupid example, you uh, if, forward, if you're yeah. going to buy a motorcycle and you're going to start saving money, well, yeah, sometimes you're going to just keep putting the money away. You're going to make decisions that are going to lead you towards that thing. And it's going to be, you may not get to do all the things you want to do, but you know why you're doing it. And you're okay with that, and that process comes to. In the end, you've made the sacrifices in the process, and now you get. Because the those are, this weekend. well, yeah. those are all functional decisions, right? Yeah. Those yeah. are all conscious functional True. choices, yeah. right? Where the problem becomes is when it becomes dysfunctional, right? So I drink a fifth of vodka a day for years, yeah. right? I stop drinking because I don't want to be that person anymore, and I focus on my training, and I focus on becoming a better person. And then I train, I eat well, I'm in control of my life, and all of a sudden, I have this terrible relationship with food. I train five hours a day because I'm trying to avoid the fact that I hate myself. Yeah. I can't look in the mirror, and I don't like anybody around me. I took but, a perfectly healthy... But how did it happen, by the way? Because Life circumstances. <laughs> exactly, you started to... Inst where were you at your best when you were doing your own training? Mm -hmm. Where you were programming for yourself, saying like, this is what I love doing, I love myself right now. Right, the I like problem, how I feel, this is what I yeah, need. What you, you went from there, it's like, I need to win. So now you became outcome based. Mm -hmm. And now you started switching to giving energy to the matrix. And, there's a and someone the yeah. programs for you and someone gives your nutrition. And you gave yourself to the matrix. Right. And, and so that's when shit went sour. So even a healthy thing can be dysfunctional. Yeah. Like, Yes, if you want to spend five minutes on social media, media to unwind after work, great. Yeah. It's when that five yeah, minutes becomes yeah. 10 and 20, and but I want to be that person. And I remember and now the I system yeah. is designed for that. So are you strong enough right now to go spend five minutes on social media? You need to know that about yourself. Yeah. Can you just look at pretty girls for five minutes and be gone? I can't have peanut butter in the house. I get yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's <laughs> a problem. I should be able to have peanut butter but in right the house. Now, but right now, I can't. Gonna, yeah. Yeah. Right now, it, it's not going to happen. It really yeah. can be that simple. Yeah. So making conscious decisions to save up for a motorcycle and then five years after having it becoming reckless totally a possibility yeah. but reckless usually is wise because yeah. you watch espn where the guy race and you think you're that yeah and you're not and so now you're like well um yes i am and now you're gonna go kill yourself so again it's the problem is always if you were to do things for yourself you'd be fine it's when you start to switch the matrix like you basically you're being pulled toward the system continuously and it takes a very strong mind to see the the puppeteer to see yeah. the strings so oh, like that's ultron with yeah. there is no strings on me <laughs> yes. that's the hard part is how is seeing the strings for what they are that's and the strings are the yeah in, yes exactly the strings are the sympathetic fixes so when those guys get pissed saying show me the study that's what this is. It's yeah. a sympathetic fix so that they don't have to learn themselves. Yeah. So then they I'm ask for now. higher I'm not authority. Going any further in this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not further until yeah. you prove to me that you're right. I'm not going any further. Yeah, yeah because you don't want to learn for yourself. Yeah. So you're again, you're back to sympathetic fixes, giving the energy to the matrix. You're just being manipulated. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm offended as a human being is because I see the strings and I'm like, dude, you're dancing to somebody else's string right now by saying empirical study because that's not truly the point the point is you just want to express your anger instead of turning it toward the stuff you did wrong and to learn for yourself so why do we default to that 
Right. Because so, of that complacency, that lack of yeah. participation, yeah. right? Like suddenly and I love my life and now I'm not based. active. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So that's and the it's easy to then focus, focus on, yeah. on just so that's that a deep brain. So mm-hmm. evolutionary speaking, we started with the sympathetic nervous system and all that stuff. And after that, we started to build a vagus nerve, which allow us to live in society, right, in tribes. And then the brain started in layers, started to get more and more complex and more. Evolved. So the CNS has been evolving into what it gives us now. The higher functions of the brain require the most energy, which is logical as it becomes. The problem is they also take off the bat the most energy. This is called the selfish brain theory, which the, you guys can Google out there and even on Wikipedia. And basically that shows that, for example, the brain, even though it's less than 2%, it's 2% of the mass of the human body, requires 50% of its energy right off the bat. Like especially, for example, it requires 100 grams of um, glucose a day. Crazy. At least, if not mine, probably 600, <laughs> but that's another problem. Um, but it requires more glucose than almost anything. So it requires 50% of your energy, if you do nothing, is the brain. It's something, why? Because it's so evolved, because it's so precise. That's why we're on top of the food chain, because we have that fucking thing. And the brain is what allows us to make predictions. So when you make a lot of prediction and prediction has to change continuously, world with 7 billion people, the world we live in right now that has so much stimulus, that the more stimulus you have, the more prediction you need to make faster, the more energy you spend, the more that part of the brain will suck up the energy to make sure this can be done. And so now, at some point, the brain is going to go, okay, there's a limited, um, it's, a Thano, it's a Thanos kind of thing, where yeah. it's like, look, energy is finite. We're gonna to have to kill half the universe because otherwise there won't be enough energy for the brain to work. So the brain is always, as a Thanos button, always looking to wipe out the stuff you don't yeah. want to go into because there's not enough energy otherwise. That's why you crave sugar too, by the way, on social media. It's because the brain is like, dude, you, you better give me glucose, otherwise uh, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do all the shit you ask me to continuously yeah. process. Because I'm constantly experiencing all these extremes, though it's because totally the detached from the productive figure process. It out. Yeah. The yeah. matrix has figured it out. Yeah. He knows where the button is. is that's for, I call that the diva brain because that's the most sensitive part of you, the most up to art and also the most bitchy. Yeah, because it's the loudest voice. It's the most awesome. selfish, loudest, bitchy voice that also gives you art and higher function and all that stuff. But it's also the stuff that requires the most attention. That's yeah. why I call it the diva brain. He wants your energy, always. So every time you have frustration, the part of the brain is like, look, you're asking me to do a thousand things. Is this new thing you're adding worth it or not? Yeah. So I'm on social media getting frustrated and then I read an article by Strong Fit. I'm like, oh, fuck that guy. Because it's either let me gather my energy for myself, experiment, try, learn, and that means shut off most things yeah or is it the matrix pulling my energy we say no, no, no don't focus on one thing how about we focus on a thousand right so now you have frustration and your brain is like okay but now we're starting to run low on energy so can you quit one out you go strong fit fuck the guy then you can move on to the next one yeah. and because you have learned that we're not worth it you almost have that dopamine feeling going like that felt liberating mm-hmm. i'm liberated mm-hmm. from my anger toward that guy yeah because your diva brain is like dude we can't do all this yeah so you will have to choose where you put your energy. And so now that you have not spending the energy, the brain is like, that's a good prediction right there. Right. Fuck that guy. That guy is an asshole. And you don't have to think about this anymore, but you also don't have to learn about it. Screw the abs and being hungry. That donut looks good. Yeah, definitely. And this <laughs> glucose, I want this experience There's glucose seeds mm-hmm. in that donut. Yeah. That's mood. That's uh, brain serotonin, the mood regulation. It allows you to feed a part of the brain that requires so much energy. So choices will be made on that as well. Like if I have the choice, so that's why Nietzsche used to say there is more virtue in one virtue than in two. Because once you do one thing and you focus yourself completely, you will master that craft. The second yeah. you divide it in two, your brain has to give energy towards one thing or another. And now on top of your diva brain, there's a fucking matrix trying to take your energy away. Yeah. And that's why people can't learn shit and anymore. And it's this slow, it's like that, death by a thousand cuts you Tomorrow, know what i mean right? like 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 i don't want to get i don't want to take a whole sword to the gut but by god let's just but there's someone <laughs> continuously yeah. cutting continuously yeah. cutting and until you separate yourself from the puppeteer from the from the fucking matrix until you see the strings it will be so hard for you to master anything that's why mastering craft is there's so much less look at the society we live in there's a lot less craftsmen 
now than they used to be. It's actually getting a bit better, yeah. but there's a lot less. Why? Because it requires your total focus on one thing and nothing in this society is telling you that that's okay. They're actually telling you, why would you do only one thing? Look, there's a thousand. Look at the uh, food choices we have. Mm-hmm. Instead of one food, you have a thousand. You can have kangaroo, you can have mango in December, you can have any form of sugar you want. That's the fucking matrix saying like, I need your energy to turn, remember Morpheus, I like to turn into this. <laughs> That's what this is, right? And so between the divine brain and the matrix, you're fucked. Your learning system is fucked. The problem is, that's life. So by giving it to the matrix and giving it to the divine brain, literally, enfin, basically to the matrix, because the divine brain is part of the system, some God is there, but to giving to the matrix literally is leading us to death. It makes me think about my old, the old way I used to train for CrossFit, where it was like, I need to be a better runner, I need to be a better gymnast, I need to be a better lifter, I need to be all of these things and better than everyone else. No, you just kind of needed to be average at all of them. And if you wanted to get better at one, you had to push the other ones to the side and focus. Which all good programmers will tell you. You want to be strong? Okay, next two years, we're going to, we're going to up your snatch. You want 20 pounds on your snatch, less than 10 kilos. Okay, two years. Yeah. Well, look at look, my, this is my favorite thing I look is look up uh, how far Matt Fraser's snatch has improved since 2014. Yeah. Hardly. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, which is Mastered. fine. Because he yeah. was good at it. Anymore. Yeah. And here's the deal. But by the way, he's dead lift just, doesn't improve either. Yeah. Does just doing CrossFit going to improve that? No. But he doesn't need that to make that any better. Mm-hmm. But that's why if someone comes to us and says, well, I want to make my snatch better, but I'm going to only CrossFit, do CrossFit. Yeah. I'm like, well, no. No. Because those are, while they're related, they're different things. Yeah. You know? and, and it really changed. Like the mindset of training with this concept was great because instead of me saying like, oh, well, someday I should work on my footwork with my Olympic lifting. And if I fix that, it will get better. It was like, you're going to work on it today. Yeah. yeah. Because we're, and we're going to drive as hard into these steps in this process as we can. Yeah. You know, we're going to push and push and push. And How that, far into it are we? We're about an hour. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And if I don't. Also, no bells. Nice. I don't, they, they must not work too in a much weird wind because the wind is starting to pick up, but yeah. right now we're still winning. Yeah. So yeah. But if I don't actively participate in my training, exactly. then of course I'm going to say, well, those ten snatches were okay. No, you watched no, the video, not. and each one you only moved one foot. So now you get ten tries, and if you fuck it up, you go home. That's yeah. what the ghost is about. That's it. The ghost is about raising your frustration so we can re- raise your learning rate. Yeah. That, so for people I don't know, the ghost is let's say snatches. You have five chances to do three snatches, not perfect, but that... You set a parameter. That that's, set a parameter, yeah. like my feet has to have to do this, my hands have to do that, I cannot bend my arms, whatever you want. You have five tries to do three, the correct way. If you don't do it the three correctly, you give yourself a punishment. Either you go home, not train, or you can do 200 meter sled sprint. Some shit like you do it, you don't want to do either, because you want to keep on training, therefore go home. You'll be so pissed, right? You'll raise anger, that's going to raise your, your learning rate. The next time you go to do snatches, you'll do better because you know what the punishment is if you don't. Yeah. So you've raised your learning rate. Yeah. That's the only way to do it. And you can, and this is important, is you can actually raise the stakes of your training without raising the risk of injury. It's not about doing more it's or about doing learning something rate. stupider. It's, it's about because remember, yeah. you're trying to learn the snatch. Yeah. Good, raise your learning rate. Yeah. So doing 100 snatch with poor form won't do shit. Yeah. Right? You, you just need to learn the running, the running rate. So doing three snatches at 20% won't do it either yeah. because there's energy being put in. So it's not about the snatch. It's not about the weight of the snatch. It's about your reaction to it. If you want to learn, you have to go through frustra- boredom, frustration, anxiety, anger. Because every time you crank the learning rate to the moment where, got it. And then new weight, we do it again. Yeah. And you, but you're going to have to do it every single time because that's what the system is and it's not bad. Like that's the tournament last weekend. I put myself into that situation. I went to Hoos and my hands was like this. I was playing pool literally. Mentally, I was great, by the way. I was like, I want to win this. But my hand is like this. I was like, what the fuck? So I felt frustration and then anger by the end and I lost, lost the last match. I should have won. That got me angry. But guess what? I woke up the next morning. I had learned so much. I knew right away the next morning the certain mistakes I'll never make again because yeah. I've increased my learning rate where it needs to be for me to learn. And now that you know, you also have... Can't wait for you, the next you, one. Well, and you can take the time now to see, all right, I, I, I went here, I pulled up short here. I thought, you know what I mean? You, yeah, know, but, uh, you, you know, know, you you start to know where you are in the process all the time. And I can't wait for the next one. Yeah. But you have to understand, the tournament felt like shit. Yeah. And I was angry and I was pissed and I was, uh, and I was like, but I'm learning. So now I can't wait for the next one. Knowing the next one will feel the same. 
Yeah, I'm still going to feel like would, shit. Would you sit down for three hours to try and read a book while your son was talking to you? No. So why would you go to the gym for an hour thinking about everything, everything but else. what you're doing? Yeah. yeah. It's you're crazy. not going to learn anything. You're not going to read any part of that book. It's the same thing. One of the things that I've started doing the last couple of months has been I'll go to a gym in Vienna to Dust Gym, yep. Intelligent Strength, which is literally yep, the know. capital of awesome in the world. I think so. <laughs> For real. Capital of awesomeness. I yeah. like it. But they, um, I should be on their Instagram. But this is probably between, depending on the transport, it's probably between 70 and 80 minutes for me via public transportation, which I'm from South Dakota. Way on the way there. Yeah, on the, each way. On each uh, way. Public transportation is not a thing that exists where I'm from. <laughs> so it's not something I've ever done, nor America's am I that. not winning in the No, and I'm not, and, and South Dakota is not at the forefront of that. <laughs> Population-wise, there's no option. So uh, I spend, like, to, to, so for me to go do these sessions, one, the place was cool, I wanted to go there. It's uh, awesome. So, cool. so I made sure to yeah. add a couple sessions. Love the gym. There. But it takes me, those days take me between four and five hours yeah. from the time I leave my house to the time I get back. Uh, I go there, you know, I, you're spending at least probably almost three hours traveling. Yeah. <coughs> a bus to a train to another train to walking. I mean, that's some gangster shit. Yeah. And it's just not long enough to do any work on the bus or train either. You a bit, but not enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, so, but that process raises the, my investment in it from a time standpoint to where and I've this isn't like all of a sudden I did it and my sessions are kicking ass by the way but like the uh, better. when you have a bad one the better, yeah. you pay a greater price yeah. for it because mm -hmm. what I got to do is sit back on that fucking train you have you have 90 less minutes. bad ones yeah and it's like it's like, it's like you know what I now I know where I came short and now I'm going to sit here and regret it cuz yeah. I put all this time into here and I failed here because of this and also though it gives me that time to put those things in that box and and then the next time I go, it's like I ain't leaving shit on the table here. And it's not about doing more effort and just dying. It's about being doing deliberate and doing it right. People doing always make the joke towards us, like you know, I haven't had that epiphany moment where I decided to sell all my shit and move across the world. That what you just described is exactly the same thing. Yeah. You decided that you're going to invest yourself completely. Yeah. And you're going to make sure that you get the most out of your time yeah. and any negative consequence that's on you you yeah. own it but yeah. also require what people don't see is the 35 decisions that led to that one yeah people think you're gonna wake up one morning with an epiphany let's sell everything and move across the world no. like what people understand is you had to go through a bad marriage first you had to drink a fist of vodka a day you had to get fat you had to before slowly but surely chipping at it but the decision to change everything in your life came out of that one day you decided to get better mm -hmm. yeah. a better athlete then you cut the vodka you cut the husband the ex-husband the whole stuff and from there yes did you go wrong on to because you gave your energy back back to the mat matrix but everything comes from the day where you go today no i'm going to get better i'm going to learn yeah. that's where you come from as yeah. well mm -hmm. the only reason you're going to dash gym now is because now you want to learn yeah. before you would have learned i'm not spending that much time on oh, public transportation much, but now you're willing to pay the price yeah. because you want to learn yeah that's where that first step needs to come in from people is a willingness to learn yeah. if you're not willing to learn i cannot help yeah and it's I about say that to everybody. It really is. Just and get, get yourself underwater. It's your man. decision. Get in the situation. No but it's your much, decision. Yes. How much you've convinced yourself that you're asking for the study because you want to learn? No. Yeah. It's because yeah. you want to find a reason to not do it. And and, and you like, don't want to invest yourself. And like yeah. everything else, avoiding that full depth approach, it will get you results until it doesn't. Yeah. And that's the truth. It gets you average. As I remember when I first that's started it. CrossFit, uh, one of the things I was way out of shape, all that stuff is the rule that I made to myself. This was one of those, like, I wouldn't describe that moment as rock bottom, but from a fitness standpoint, yeah. that's about as low as I got. Uh, I get to where uh, the rules I set for myself, I was going to do this thing. And I got really good advice from a guy who was a member there who ended up becoming a client of mine after we opened our gym. Um, but when I had first started, he said, just stick with it for 90 days. Just do it, do the thing for 90 days, and then you will have results there that then will be like, that'll give you the momentum to go on. And so what I decided for myself was I was just going to, like we say, check the boxes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show up yep. three days a week for this much, then four and then five. I'm going to progress to this. And my number one thing was I'm just going to do every rep. Okay. I'm not going to short it, like not even in the warm ups. I'm, I'm just going to do the reps. And I didn't know any better about movement quality or anything yep. at that time. So what I did was just started doing that amount of work and it really really worked 
because that all I needed at that point was the discipline to do the work. Mm -hmm. I needed to take but myself still, to that point. There was point. a willingness to learn. Correct, correct. But then what happened was as you start to see as things go on, and I start yeah, to see problems to with more. other people, yes. and I start to see things. And then I had to find out why this was happening, and that's what pulled pulled me into all willingness these other to things. learn again. So yeah. it like what Kala is talking about, like people, you know, trying to back off from learning. It's like, why did you guys truly do CrossFit? Is it because you want to be fit at everything or because CrossFit allows you to be average at everything? Yeah. That's an important question to ask yourself because too many times I've seen CrossFit saying like, yeah, I can't deadlift 500 pounds, but I can run that much. Mm -hmm. I'm like, is that why you're doing it? So that you can always justify not being good at something. There's a difference being trying to be to be here and trying to get all this at all that yeah. and basically just being average and everything as a reason not to learn anything properly. Yeah. That is not the same attitude. Going yeah. to Yale by association means you're probably pretty smart. Doing CrossFit by association does not mean that you're fit. No, no. They're very different. <laughs> But be careful that don't you do, be careful that if you're doing CrossFit so you can criticize people that are better at certain things by saying, yeah, but I'm better at this. So you can criticize lifter by saying I have better endurance yeah. and you can criticize endurance people by saying I can lift more. You are trying to be that average so you don't have to put the energy toward learning. Yeah. You are again in the matrix. And it gives you the opportunity to pull it all back around like we talked about, you know, doing that being, embracing your averageness at lots of things. Also what happens is then you sit from that place And then you can fucking poke judge. at specialists. You can judge Like this everybody. guy squats a thousand pounds. Yeah, but he's fat. I'm like, bitch, you, you squat 315. Yes. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. He squats a thousand pounds. You do very different things, but you don't get to talk about that guy and what he does. You don't get to criticize get Isaac to. Newton. No. Like the dude who had the balls to say, well, all science. Yeah. I'm like, you're not smart enough to criticize Isaac Newton. Yeah. Very, very few people are, if yeah. anybody. You don't get to criticize Carl Friston. You don't. You're not good enough to criticize those people. Learn from them, then criticize. Yeah. I will never criticize Isaac Newton or Carl Friston because I'm way below Now, them. Now, option number three, which is the option people always seem to miss in these situations, yeah. is or fucking go away. Yeah. Dude, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. why is this a thing? Okay, you don't like, go away then. Yeah. I, don't I, comment. I, I don't, I don't yeah. need to read something about don't Carl comment. Friston. Don't take the time of commenting on our stuff. I And don't if get I don't that, like yeah. it or disagree with it if, it, if it's not something I can pull into my world, I'm just on to the did things anybody that work for out me. there sees the strong fit one name or anything anywhere on Instagram or Facebook but all stuff where we answer people yeah. do you see me going on anybody's page and starting to just push button and do any of that shit no you know why because I'm fucking busy yeah. the people <laughs> who I'm get, doing shit the yeah. people who get pissed off about the small things like that are the ones who have nothing better to do yeah. so my only hope is that that boredom eventually makes them change eventually makes them go it comes from Ooh. a good place that anger comes from a good place yeah. it's a willingness to learn i just i just think the matrix the matrix has misdirected that willingness to learn and uses it to feed itself mm -hmm. i see people being manipulated into taking their good intention and turning it into something negative and that is at the cost of your own actions if you don't do enough in life you need to suppress sympathetic fixes Let's continue tomorrow because we're over an hour and this, I think we can that's good, keep that's on going. That's a great yeah. uh, line of thought. So yeah. I want to finish. So I do tomorrow. We'll, we'll wrap up with the good stuff. Yeah. Uh, Julian's a strong fit one on Instagram. Kayla Still is OK32OOH okay, or OH. Mm -hmm. It's OH. Pronounce it correctly. It's OH. It's OK, not OK. Yeah, OK. I, see, I thought there was It's Kayla and it's OK. See, listen, yeah, guys, you. whatever. Fine. Whatever. Don't fucking follow either of these people. Yes. Especially me. <laughs> I'm at 30,000. I'm, I'm Tyler F. And Stone on Instagram. Uh, what else do we got? Strong By the way, I'm lying. I, I want 300,000, like all the chicks. Yeah. There's so many women that are, their only stuff is they're beautiful and they get like a million followers. I'm like, I, It doesn't I, work for you when you posted pictures of me. You lost people. <laughs> I lost people. Oh, I remember. How the fuck does that work? I, I post my abs. It worked. Though, we we had a couple things where we had a couple. People. We had a couple like boosts and followers on Instagram, and 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 I messaged Julian, and it was like, oh sweet. And then I said, but then I remembered that I follow this girl who has three million followers, yep. and it's just pictures of her ass. Yep. And I was like, here we'll we are. Here we are trying so are. hard to do something good. One percent. We are just. We like are one percent of our ass. We're just missing. Yeah. We need more ass. We are a ass. pimple on our ass. <laughs> we are literally. We're one percent of our ass. Yeah. We are a pimple on our ass. That's who we are. Yeah. And I think we get. I think good. we get. We get more hate too. So. Uh, I wonder how many followers Carl Friston has. <laughs> 
Oh, that he's not. I haven't found him. Okay, I actually shit. tried. He's too when busy we, to have yeah, exactly. He said, "Don't even on social." When we did everything, yeah. I couldn't find him at all. I even took to just some hashtags to find, and you could find some Dane's on LinkedIn yeah, material. Yeah, but exactly. he's let's make cards. You know why? Because yeah. he's busy changing the world. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, homie, don't play that. <laughs> uh, so, what else do we have? Uh, strongfitequipment.com is where sandbags shirts and stuff. We have new websites coming up. New websites will be rolling out. Dotcom is coming. Julian's Corner. Dotcom is coming. Yeah. Uh, that should probably be out by the time you get this. Yep. And uh, also Australia. I, I totally forgot about this whole time. Australia, Manta Fitness for sandbags. For oh, sandbags like and everything. Because in that area of the world, shipping is a bitch. So, yeah. go so they them, take care me. of the strong fit stuff yeah. in, in Australia. So, gosh, I think that's got us covered right. for today. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll, we'll do the next, except next we'll week. take the view to the other side. That's right. We'll turn it around a little bit. See you guys. Thanks, guys.